welcome back to my channel. I'm Deanna and you're watching Orchid D. We're going to be doing some repotting today, but a little bit different from usual. All the orchids that I've picked today, except for maybe one of them, are getting repotted because they're actually outgrowing their pots. So you will see that a lot of these guys have roots which are now growing over the edge of the pots. And that is just not that ideal for me. I obviously struggle as it is in my hot summers to keep on top of hydration. So a lot of those roots that are becoming aerial will not get hydration unless they're going into the pots. And along with that, they're just a lot more prone to breaking if they're not growing into the mediums. So some of these guys, you know, are due for repotting anyway because their medium is over two years old, but some of them were repotted in the grand scheme of things not that long ago. Some of them were repotted even less than a year ago. So the medium's not gonna be too bad. So I suppose over the years, my approach to repotting has changed a little bit. When I started out three years ago doing my first repots, I watched a lot of videos that encouraged you to get every single last little bit of old medium out of the root system and I might have been a little bit rough with the root systems in order to achieve that especially cat layers and you know some of the oncidiums and stuff you play around with the root systems too much they'll just die off you know no matter how gentle you are with them you're changing their conditions and the roots are more likely to deteriorate after you repot them so I'm always trying to strike this balance now between removing old degrading medium but also not disturbing the root systems too much so a lot of these orchids that were repotted not that long ago will probably just be up potted which means I'll take them out probably just plonk them in a bigger pot and fill around so the medium that I generally use these days is premix of orchiata bark perlite and charcoal and I mix a bit of sphagnum pretty much into all my mixes to be honest sphagnum is the only one that deteriorates really quickly orchiata bark lasts for a long time and charcoal and perlite they're inorganic so they just don't break down and for for the last year or so, the sphagnum that I've been using is really high quality. It actually stays intact for a really long time. I do tend these days to be a lot less pedantic about removing every single last piece of medium. I'll remove medium if I feel that it's really disintegrating or I try and remove what sphagnum I can, remove the dead roots if I can access them. But you know, if I dig around there too much, I often risk losing more roots and there's no difference really if I've got a bit of old medium in there or if I end up with lots of dead roots then the medium's still going to be breaking down and still going to be acidic. So I guess my aim is to minimize disturbance of live root systems if I can help it. I also try and refresh the medium as much as I can. At the end of the day it is the new roots that matter the most and as long as they're growing into nice fresh medium then that's what's most important. So the main exceptions to that are when I do get new plants I do like to replace it almost completely with my own medium. So that's fully perlite. I would prefer to not have orchids that are in different types of medium to what I normally grow in. And ones like this, which were repotted over two years ago. And at that stage, I wasn't using the same type or quality of medium as I'm using now. So I do concentrate on getting more of that medium out than I will concentrate for the other plants. So let's have a quick look at these orchids one by one. But before I begin, I just want to apologize. I'm still getting used to this camera. This is the Canon M50 that I'm just test recording on, but the autofocus is uh, really attuned to things that are close up. So if I put my hand here, you can see the background goes quite fuzzy. So I'm still getting used to that and I'm still getting used to the setting. So just bear with me, things uh, go a little bit in and out of focus. But down here, we've got my two Encyclia radiatas. I actually think they were the same plant, broke apart when I first repotted a couple of years ago and this ended up being a semi-hydro experiment which clearly didn't work out very well but it's beginning to grow out of the pot as you can see the root system on this growth here is growing into the medium but this is starting to grow out of the medium so we'll repot that and same here we're sort of pushing up against the edge of the pot now so over here we've got Cattleya Lululand which Oop, has a big chunky root there as you can see it's sort of growing a bit lopsided anyway so it needs some readjusting it might be able to go back into this pot Cattleya walkeriana I believe I only got this in like July or August last year and it is just uh, 
going mental you can see all those roots in there roots growing out of the pot it's pretty much walking out of the pot and uh, desperately desperately needs to go into something bigger but ones like this I'm pretty happy that the medium's not too bad over here we've got my common aracatatante which was actually mislabeled as a Nelly Isla so you can see it's finished its blooms I'll chop them off and I have noticed uh, some new growths popping out there if you can see on there and there's another on the other side as well down here we've got Oncidium Space Race Chanel with a new growth there it's probably got an enough room to grow this new growth but it's in such a small pot and it grows quite an extensive root system so it just needs to go in a bigger pot and I think it'll like that much better and dry out less quickly I thought it was finished blooming actually these blooms uh, died off quite a while ago but it's actually just um, opened up a new bloom here anyway um, it'll get probably up potted today this one here is a no ID cat layer that I got back in 2018 and it's uh, it's well growing out of its pot it has never rebloomed for me it's actually one of the first cat layers I got from a local orchid nursery and yeah it just never rebloomed but maybe part of that's because it's in some of the older media that I used to use that I was never really happy with my pride and joy my wanagara apple blossom so this came to me last year with no root so all the roots in there are less than a year old you can see that it is growing some new roots down there which are going to be outside of the pot I do wonder if that's a little sheath that's coming up there now anyhow um, because this was repotted less than a year ago uh, I'm pretty confident that that medium is still pretty good there's not a huge amount of sphagnum in there I kept it pretty loose mix and so I'll probably just up pot that one as well this one here, I do believe I got it the same time as that other no ID. You can see that that new growth is fully growing outside of the pot. It does have this sheath here. It's a double sheath. And I hope I don't stall it flowering because this one also has not rebloomed for me. But just like that other cat layer, it is growing into a medium that I'm not 100% happy with. So I do want to change it out but you can see those are all pretty new roots in there. Hopefully I don't have to disturb them too much. So the last couple are this cat layer, which I seem to have lost the tag for, and I can't quite remember the name of, but we got it in bloom. I think it's like Dal's good one. I would have preferred to repot it when those growths were a little bit smaller, but kind of missed the boat. This is the only one that I'm repotting because I want to get it out of this straight perlite. And then the last one here is my Onsidisa Sweet Sugar. My beautiful dancing lady which just about to grow over the edge there it does have a new little growth that's developing there that i can see as well so yes that's all the orchids that i'm repotting today and the focus of this video is going to be the ones that i'm up potting even though i've got a, a fair mix but you can see i've got lots and lots of repotting to do so i can't dwell too much on each of them we might use the iwanagara apple blossom as a bit of an example of one of the ones that I'm up putting. So without further ado, let us begin. All right guys, well, I've got two of my cat layer types and we're gonna up pot them together, um, but we're gonna do it two different ways. So I've got my Wanagara apple blossom here and it's going to be taken out of the pot and put into a new container. So it's in a 15 centimeter pot at the moment and I don't have any clear plastic pots that are bigger than this. So it's gonna have to go in a different type. Now I've got these two types which are both about 20 centimeters I'm going to transfer it into this shallower one and um, if you can see it's got like a bit of a reservoir there and I've actually soldered in two extra holes down here um, just so it can drain a bit better otherwise it's going to hold water in there I think that'll work quite well for this um, now this walkeriana we're going to do things a little bit differently so I actually potted this back in July or August so it's only been six months and you can see how extensive that root system is in just that six month period it's grown two rounds of new growth it's got three directions of growth it's just doing really well and I don't really want to take it out of the pot you can see how many roots are just attached to the side of the pot there and I'm almost certainly going to disturb them quite a bit so I am going to put the whole pot inside another pot and just fill new medium around so I've got two options here um, I've got the next size up I think is about 10 centimeters and I think this is about 12 and a half centimeters oops um, so I'm actually going to go two sizes up because it's if you can see it's actually growing from the two directions so if I just go one size up it's going to fill up really quickly 
So I think that'll work quite nicely and I should be able to avoid repotting hopefully for at least a year, but it is, um, it's actually really vigorous and it's doing really well. So who knows, I might have to repot it even sooner than that. But So we're gonna start off with the Iwanagara Apple Blossom. Now for those of you who have followed my channel for a while, you'll know when I do my mass repottings, I usually unpot everything check out the root systems, get all my repotting gear, my new pots and things like that, and then repot in one foul swoop. But uh, when you're up potting, it's a little bit different because you kind of have to have all your stuff ready to go. So as soon as you sort of take it out of the pot, you're gonna put it into a new pot and then just fill around. So I've got my pot. Um, I've also got my usual premix here of bark. And a little bit of sphagnum here as well, which I'm just um, pre-moistening. So I won't need that much, but I've also got um, a few sterilized tools here, which may come in handy. So in fact, you can sort of see that it's a little bit unruly and I am actually going to chop off a couple of these back leaves, which isn't always recommended. This leaf in particular just gets caught in everything. Um, and so I am going to very ruthlessly chop off these back leaves they knock stuff over and they get in my way all the time so yes uh, it's got lots of new leaves and luckily the iwanagara does produce multiple leaves per growth and i think it'll be just fine so what i am going to do uh, because this pot does have like a little bit of uh, a reservoir type thing down the bottom. I'm just going to put a layer of liquor down the bottom. Just because I feel like whatever's down there might disintegrate a little bit too quickly, even though I have put a couple of drainage holes down there. Um, so I've got a little bit of liquor, I've got a bit of lard cloth down here as well. There we go. Now I am going to put a little bit of sphagnum down here as well. And we're going to top that with a bit of large buck. So next up, I do have a couple of little stakes in here which we're going to remove. And let's get my wanagara out of the pot. I am being very cautious with those roots down there. This root system actually looks really good. I can see a few little dead roots down the bottom, so I am going to just cut them off. So I think that's pretty good. Okay, so except for the ones right at the base here, I think most of these guys are pretty good. So what I'm going to do is, so I'm just going to take a little bit of medium out of the base here, just because I know that this pot is a little bit shallower than what we started off with. So while I'm here, it's a little bit of sphagnum in there and I might just remove that. I actually think that's pretty good. You'll see it's sort of growing in this awkward manner, but I've got the oldest cane and it's just going to sit on the edge of the pot like that. Just so it has a little bit more room from the front to grow. It's only got one direction of growth and also the back few bulbs just have no roots on them so they're not going to grow new roots. I'd actually like enough space for those front bulbs to grow. We shall begin filling. So there's obviously an area there with lots of fresh roots coming out. I'm just going to be very careful when I fill in that section. Alright guys, well that's the Iwanagara apple blossom there. What I will say is that I don't know if I'm 100% happy with how much room I've left. It's probably just enough for two growths depending on if I can rotate it or not. So if I can make a lot of the new growths come around this way, which is easier said than done, uh, then that might be okay. But 
otherwise if it goes towards the edge of the pot in the next couple of years then the next step might be to chop off a couple of those back bulbs and by then it should be a nice strong healthy plant with lots of good roots so yeah um, I'm sorry if you couldn't see a lot of what I was doing there but it was pretty straightforward I knew where most of the air gaps were that needed filling so um, it's pretty stable there I don't think it needs any staking so I'll just see how it goes all right everyone next up we've got Cattleya walkeriana. You can see this is actually in an 80 millimeter pot, an eight centimeter pot, which is my smaller seedling size pots. I've actually decided to go all the way up to a 15 centimeter pot. And that's because I tried it in this pot and you can see that the side growths are already beginning to touch the edge. If it's grown pretty much doubled in size in six months, I don't want to have to repot this guy again and I really think it's going to be fine in this 15 centimeter pot just because it's got three directions of growth I can put the pot a little bit in the center and it's going to have enough room to grow a few new sets of growths over the next couple of years you can also see that it's got nice fleshy roots so I can use a little bit of a larger medium however I know that this Cattleya walkeriana loves moisture um, it does like a wet dry cycle so it likes drying out in between however it's tolerated the water reservoir being in the containers really well through my summer um, it just drinks it up so quickly it's such a thirsty plant so I actually think it's going to do pretty well in this bigger pot seems excessive to go from 80 millimeters to 150 but i'll let you guys know how it goes i think it's actually going to be just fine in fact i think it's really going to like it so let's fill in this pot and put a little bit of sphagnum in because it does seem to be liking the sphagnum I've just tilted it back a little bit towards the back section of the plant because it's actually growing out three different directions this way. Okay, and Cattleya walkeriana is done can't really see the inside pot anymore because it's covered in a bit more medium. You can sort of see one of the rims there. But I think it's going to do really well like this. It's got medium all around the pot, but this side of the pot at the back of the plant, you can see is a tiny bit closer to the edge than the other side. So I've got actually four directions of growth, I've realized. I've got one, two, three, four there. I think it's going to enjoy that mix and I'm going to get started on the rest of the orchids but I hope you guys enjoyed this repotting slash up potting. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more orchid videos. Hope you guys have a great week and happy growing until I see you next time. Bye!